and welcome to Coffee with Cow uh, with Learn International. My name is Sheila and I'm the Learn International intern. And here with me today we have Mario Scarcega. How are you today, Mario? I'm good, and yourself? Good. Thanks again for being here. For those of you that are unaware, Cow is our Learn International mascot and she travels everywhere we go. Coffee with Cow is a Learn International podcast that captures and shares stories from student uh, alum and international educators. So like I said, we have Mario here today. Mario, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, um, I'm Mario Scarcega. I'm from El Paso, Texas, but I'm currently residing in Las Cruces, New Mexico. I went to MSU for about three years. And during that time, I, I studied abroad in Ireland. Oh, great. Well, what do you do today? What are you doing now? Today, I'm a wildland firefighter. Oh, interesting. That's very different from your major in uh, filmmaking. Yeah. <laughs> so can you um, tell me about your time in Ireland and how it affected what you're doing today? So Ireland was really, literally a life-changing experience for me because, um, oh. well, for starters, when I went in, I didn't know any of the group that I was going with. They were all new to me. I had never seen them before. So I was pretty nervous at first because it was going to be not just a new experience in a new country, but it's just brand new people that I've never spent any time with. But throughout the course of Ireland, it was just, uh, just the way we connected was a lot more different than any other friendships I've made. And to this day, I'm still friends with all of them. And I think I hang out with the majority of them and we still do projects together here and there. So that was one big major thing. So I got, I would say lifelong friends out of it. And the second thing is doing my documentary with my subject to kind of open my eyes into what I really wanted to do. Um, film is great and I love film, but being out there, I realized how much just I wanted to be in the outdoors and work with nature and animals and pretty much do anything that has to do with the environment. And that has to do a lot with, because uh, of my docu documentary subject, Gareth O'Doherty, he and I talked quite a bit and it's because of that that I went into this career. Let's um, talk more about your, your subject. Did that subject have any influence partic particularly on what you do today or even your time abroad? He did. He had a major impact. I remember the things we would talk about. He was, um, I would try to ask him questions about himself, you know, being he was my subject. And he, he would answer them, but he wouldn't go into detail, but he would go into detail about the, the whales and their migration. He would go into detail about the dolphins, about the, the schools that, that we would see and stuff like that. So, he'd go into extreme detail about his, uh, about animals and, and just the, the nature and the environment out there in Ireland and he had his son with him that he would mm. sometimes on the trip and uh, I would be interviewing Gareth and his son would say oh well orcas are the biggest dolphins and stuff you know and uh, it, was, it was like uh, yeah you're right but his kids were so proud of it too you know mm -hmm. um, I remember and I got a video of it too of the kid saying uh Gareth asking his son, he's like, do you want to be big in Hollywood, like me? Like, do you want to be in Hollywood? And the kid's like, no, I want to be out there in the ocean. He's like, that's where they need me. That's where I belong. Wow. It's a crazy experience. So like, yeah, just, that's, that's pretty so neat. That's pretty neat that you got, I mean, so you went over to Ireland with the, with the hopes of um, seeing the country, but you also went over academically for a project. And you were assigned, I'm pretty sure um, you were able to pick your subject. So you picked the specific subject, thinking that you were going into a field of filmmaking. And then you met your subject and he just exposed you to, or and probably not exposed, but reminded you of how much you enjoy the outdoors. And therefore you got to experience what he does in Ireland particularly. And then also you got an even in-depth uh, view of who he is as a person personally with his son being around. So that's a pretty neat experience getting to know him and his son following him around. Yes, it was, it was pretty great. And uh, 
at one point he was uh for the documentary well not even for the documentary he just one day he just wanted to hang out and be like uh do you want to go on this kayaking trip with us and i was like oh i was like okay and i've never been kayaking before i've been in the ocean but never like in a small kayak like that before and he was just like oh let's come out and one of these days i was like okay so i asked my my friend for a gopro and i took it to the top of uh, the front of the kayak and then i got footage out of that but just the whole experience was just crazy i remember there being swells and like wow. like like little rocky crevices that we had to like row through and stuff and i mean i've never been kayaking before and i was i'm not the greatest swimmer but he was just like he's like you're actually doing great i'm like thank you <laughs> It was, he would take us, uh, he took us into like uh, sea caves and stuff like that. It was amazing. It was an experience I've never would have experienced. I never would have like gotten out of my comfort zone and tried it. Yeah, it definitely sounds like a unique experience getting a firsthand tour from your subject, being able to really see what he does and not not just talk about it, but go through it with him. I mean, you were in the key, in the caves and in the on the ocean with him i bet it was quite quite a workout actually it sounds like a lot of work <laughs> oh yeah, it definitely was there was a, a point where we were trying to come back to shore when the day was ending and uh the wind started blowing from the shore out to the ocean so i was just rowing and rowing and fighting and my arms were burning and there was this little buoy that i was keeping like track of that was like okay i gotta row and i gotta pass this boo in like a minute or something like that it took me like 20 minutes to try to pass it and it wasn't even that far away it was only like man i don't, I don't know maybe like two meters or something like that it was just the wind was so strong that if i stopped rowing for a bit it would just push me back like 30 feet um so i had to stop in the island in a little island somewhere for a break and like eat a snickers try to re <laughs> and then Gareth came over and he kind of we talked a bit and you know, he talked about we talked about quite a bit he we talked about how he would like to travel and stuff but he doesn't want to be part of the problem he doesn't want to pay, pay for a plane ticket and like spread chemicals into the air or something like the, the exhaust you know he's that kind of yeah the, the footprint mm-hmm mm -hmm. So it was very interesting. And then we talked about me, about what we, we would do. And then when it was time to get back out in the water, I just remember just trying to get off the shore on itself was another challenge because the wind would just keep blowing me back onto the ground, onto the land. So finally, I, after maybe a couple of hours, honestly, just trying to fight the wind, I broke through. And then the wind died down and I just glided to um, back to the other, to the main shore. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you made it back <laughs> safely. I wanted to go back to, um, so you are, uh, your field is very different from what you went to school with uh, originally. I want to know at what point did you make the choice to pursue what you do now from what you pursued before? Um, was it in Ireland at the time where you're saying that's it when I go home I want to look into something else or did you come home after Ireland and then kind of sit around and think I want to pursue something else I just walk me through the timing or the thought process of changing what you thought you were going to do while you were in Ireland to what you are doing now kind of almost instantly after Ireland after we got home okay. feeling of um like oh I wish I was back you know, vacation dread or something like that or mm -hmm. come back and I was like man I like this, but it's having been there, having experienced all that, I just want to do something else. And it was almost instantaneously after that semester, I didn't go back to film. Okay. I went to other classes, biology classes, um, finished the rest of my schooling. And then um, from there, I found this program with its federal government program, Wildland Firefighting. And I applied and I got in. I've been doing that ever since. That's great. Do you still do any type of film at all at, for a hobby or in your free time? Yeah, actually I still work with, uh, with my friends from Ireland. Oh, that's um, great. They created their own little program based out of the El Paso, Las Cruces area. Uh, okay. 
And I actually starred in a little film for them for the Las Cruces Film Festival. Oh, wow. It was like maybe a month ago, but yeah, that was in their little short movie, which actually won an award. Wow. So uh, we're really proud about that. We're happy about that. It's great. It sounds like you're going to be a star. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Um, can you tell me about what it is to be a wildlife, a wild land firefighter? And um, if you have any interesting stories that you'd want to share while you were on the, on the field. Uh, let's see. So wildland firefighting is different from structure as in like buildings and stuff. Okay. In the sense that you, you can't really extinguish a wildfire just because of how hot and how big they are. Interesting. Or to control it. Okay. So that has a lot to do with either um, digging a circle around it, either by mm -hmm. handfuls or bulldozers or something, and then burning all around it, so the fire can burn the rest of it. So essentially, okay. fire with fire. We extinguish the fire with by burning its fuel. So it can oh, get bigger, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. This is new to me, but this is very interesting. Because mm -hmm. if you try to put water on it, it's just too hot. The water will just evaporate. It won't do anything. And um, the So my first time in a helicopter ever was actually on a wildfire. Um, we got in, they had to take us up into the mountain, and then we had to hike in for like like two hours worth to get to the fire wow and then start working and then work night shifts here and there so mm -hmm. we're kind of like self-sufficient okay we got to take food and stuff for this and we're not like normal firefighters and we don't carry around big like bulky gear because we, we can't hike in that we mm -hmm. it's just it's not it doesn't won't work yeah we have special fire retarded clothes and boots and everything but it's mostly we're warm and hike everywhere and that's kind of what our job is this is very interesting so when you were in a helicopter what where was this um fire where were you located this was actually in southern new mexico new mexico okay so do you primarily work in uh, new mexico yes we are my district is mostly all of southern new mexico okay pretty cut in half kind of but when our season here is over, when the monsoon season comes and the rain starts coming, we're available nationwide. So I've been to Oregon, California, Nevada, Idaho, Arizona, then all the states for, for fires. Oh, wow. That's very, inter very interesting. So is that, if you're called to other states, is that technically considered being on call? So you just kind of pick up and go with your uh, colleagues to a yes. different state? Mm -hmm. We we gotta be prepared all the like twenty four seven. Have our gear and everything ready in case uh, we get the call. And as soon as we get the call, we go in early in the morning. We jump on our fire engines and then we we ride out. It sounds like a very physically demanding job to me. It it can be at times, yes, but not really. <laughs> uh, I like it a lot, and um, people know I was in film there in the. It's okay. They don't like mind it. They're like, oh, that's cool. Like maybe mm -hmm. for us one day. I'm like, oh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, it seems like even um, after Ireland, you are still exploring. I mean, just as much as you explored in Ireland, you're still exploring exploring the state side in your career. So there's a lot of similarities and differences to what you were doing before, during, and after Ireland, in my opinion. Yeah, during Ireland, I remember. Gareth was out kayaking with a group and I um, climbed this hill, like the super tall hill, trying to get like a perfect shot. And oh, I put wow. on long lens and I was like, kind of like leaning over the edge and like boom, boom, all the way, just trying to see him. And I got a pretty good shot of him and his crew. They were miles away, but it looked pretty good. That's and very cool. Just the hike and just getting up there is just, I love, I love the hike, yeah. Yeah. Well, you get to do you get to do it now, which is very very interesting. Mario, I want to thank you so much for your time today, and thanks yeah thanks so much for being here. No, thank you for having me. I had, a, I had a blast. Yeah, we really appreciate your stories. We'd love to hear uh, what you did when you were overseas and what you're doing now, and 
Thank you. And also thank the listeners as well. You can find Coffee with Cow podcast uh, with student alum on our social media platforms such as LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram, and with their hashtag LearnINTL. And you can find this episode along with other episodes on our YouTube channel, which, which will, I will provide a link at the end of this episode. And yeah, look for our next episode coming out uh, weekly. And yeah, thanks again, Mario. We really appreciate your time. And we, uh, us here at Learn, hope you have a good rest of the day and you're keeping safe and healthy. Thank you, you too. All right, take care, Mario. Bye. Bye. -bye.